I need to make a little bit of room for the pipe to flex out of the way so that this union spud doesn't get damaged when we lower the radiator into place. So Sarah is standing on a lever to hold the radiator up um, while I try to do what the British would call some fine fettling. And the 2 by 4 that I'm standing on is bending. Yes, rather a little bit. So this radiator, which is one of the largest in the house... Um, it weighs how much? I have no idea, but a lot more than both of us put together. Yeah. Um, we had to move it so that we could replace this valve here, which I had to cut off the old one. Um, and so the only way to move it, it did not want to move, move, was to tilt the thing. And so Sarah held it in place while I replaced the valve itself, and then we let it tilt back in. Now, of course, the new valve is slightly shorter than the old one, and I've got to find a way to raise the pipes about, you know, a third of an inch uh, to get them to come up and match the threads. Okay. And so this is the pipe that goes up to that radiator, and we're trying the basically the reason it's slagged down a little bit is, is that the windowsill that was resting on has rotted away a little bit. So I'm just going to beat it up a little bit with this rubber mallet until hopefully it's back in the position it's meant to be in. You can see the cutout that they made in the joist to make sure it would be able to get up to the proper height, and now hopefully it's back there. So I'm going to go upstairs and check it. And I love it. It's moving. That's correct. It is now threading on. I had to remove a little bit more from one of the joists to make it fit. Uh, knock the pipe up perfectly into position, and then kick the radiator a little bit to get it to shift just a little bit to the side. And then I got this to thread on, and it is now tight. Yay. And that is one more valve, a difficult one, but one more replaced properly. Yay. And uh, I'll be able to Yeah, so this one is a marvelous old radiator. Uh, however, it hasn't been used in years. It's, they removed it from the network because, as far as I can tell, this valve has a giant crack in it. Um, I'm hoping the radiator itself isn't leaking. But um, anyway, I've removed, I've disconnected the radiator from both ends. I've pulled the pipe up that they had cut off down there. This pipe is almost still connected. That I'm going to try to reconnect, so I'm going to have to unthread this valve from here. Um, and then I'll, I'll try replacing the valve and seeing how things go. But in the meantime, we're removing two radiators that they had added in sort of clumsily. This is a much more modern radiator which is coming out. They had installed it in such a weird way that I had to cut it out because they didn't use unions the way they should have with radiators on one end. Um, and then upstairs, the radiator that they had moved up there, I think originally came out of the kitchen, and we're probably going to put it back into the kitchen once we do redo the kitchen. Um, but I've disconnected those radiators. I've now cut the bottom of these pipes off. Now I've got to cut them off up there, but to do that, I'm not Mr. Rubber, uh, so I can't hold them down here and cut them up there at the same time. So that's going to have to be Sarah down here and me up there. So. You take the high road, and I'll take the low road. <laughs> We're not going to Scotland, are we? I hope not. Well, actually, Scotland would be kind of nice, but even so. <laughs> well, the pipes are out. I had to use the hand hacksaw for one of them to remove the, uh, the last little bit. But <clears throat> that removes two ugly pipes from this corner of the room, and will make this considerably more usable for the library space. This little radiator is going to end up probably down in the basement if I use it at all. Um, probably under one of my workbenches. That would probably make sense. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how it ends up fitting in. And I'll take out. The trouble with all of this is that even if you can get some leverage, everything you try to brace yourself on just moves or slides. I try to grab hold of this, and then maybe this, and maybe this, and I just crunch on it. And eventually I get it to move, like this. But it's not easy when everything just wants to slide and move. Well, the good news is this one goes off there.
Good. Mm -hmm. It's almost certainly been on there for 114 years. Yep. And now it has been removed. Yes. So, there it is. <clears throat> With a big crack in it. And completely frozen. Show us the crack again. Oh yeah, that's a crack. Very obvious crack. So. Yes. And very corroded. Yes, our our house had a serious crack problem when we moved in. Yes, it did. <laughs> the plaster, the pipes. Yes. We're trying to get this house off of crack. <laughs> yes, just say no to crack. <laughs>
with this albatross around our necks. So this is the steam boiler that was installed by a uh, licensed contractor. Apparently. <laughs> um, and I'm not so sure about that licensed it part. Was, it was installed on our hot water radiator system, and it didn't work. It's also about twice the size of what it needs to be in terms of capacity, and it is um, just it, and it and it had tapering performance. At the very beginning it provided a little bit of heat in a couple radiators and now it really does nothing at all. So Well it provided a little bit of heat by burning massive amounts of fuel. Correct. And so it is coming out. It weighs a lot. Right now it will be shuffled over here and then it will eventually be removed by whoever I can sell it to. Someone apparently who has a large place, either a school or a church or something that they want to heat with steam. Um, for which this might be the appropriate thing. But, in the meantime, it needs to go and get disconnected, and then I need the space to install a proper hot water boiler. Get! Yes. Get! 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 Here we have you working on the boiler in your eminently fashionable combination of bathrobe and blinding headlight. <laughs> Why do you prefer to do house repairs in your bathroom? <laughs> it's free and easy. <laughs> well, I'm glad you enjoy it. It was a fashionable a... gentleman has houseware. I did give it to you as a gift, after all. You did, and I like it. It is marvelous. I'm going to put these over here. That one is a copy of a Turkish fabric from the 19th century. Correct. Very comfortable. Yes. Eminently wonderful. Observe, this, this tool, which is designed to actually work on bicycle frames and forks, it hooks on perfectly to be able to leverage pipe. Look at that. And there we go. It loosens right up. Now I bet it's actually loose enough that I can turn it ah, by hand so easily, so easily. Spin, spin, spin. Turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it on the heat. I am no Andila. <laughs> Any Andila fan who heard that is shuddering and cringing with right. abject horror. There we have our sediment trap for the gas pipe. This down here is intended for junk to fall into while the gas goes off this direction in case there's any little particles in the gas. So I suppose the moral of this is that bicycle mechanics can do anything. That is always a good moral. <laughs> Bicycle mechanics can do anything. Anything they set their minds to, right? Mm -hmm. So here's some of the gunk that's been collecting in the boiler. It looks like motor oil. It does look like motor oil. But what it actually is is water with bits and pieces from the ick that's been in this system. One thing that was good about having this sacrificial boiler attached to this old system is that it has cleaned out a bunch of the gunk. Um, now I'm still going to be doing some draining to try to get the, the rest of the gunk out of there, but it at least has absorbed a bunch of the, the black foulness that came out of the pipes and the old radiators. And uh, I'm going to push that down the drain, yes. And I'll be scrubbing all of this floor down before I install the new one. Once I get the bad one out of here and get the old system drained as best I can. So. Who was that author who wrote about the Cthulhu and the Elder Gods? Ah, uh, H.P. Lovecraft. Lovecraft, yeah, that's right, Lovecraft. Yeah. This looks like something out of a Lovecraft story. It does look like something out of a Lovecraft story, the black gunk. And I will let it drain now. I think I have to let it out. You know, it's got to get out of there. Yeah, don't get it on your bathrobe. Right, I will try not to.